A building collapses somewhere in the greater Kansas City region. Quick response is needed from multiple jurisdictions. As emergency crews race to the site, each juggles three different radios on three different bandwidths to coordinate essential aid. In the minutes it takes to relay and repeat information on these broadcasting channels, lives could be lost. Today, those lives can be saved. Several years ago, public safety professionals in the Mark region saw the need to streamline communications between first response agencies. They began to develop a plan for one line of communication instead of 50 radio systems in an area larger than Connecticut, something professionals call interoperability. With funding from grants from the Department of Homeland Security, the Rambus Network was created to fill that need. Rambus stands for Regional Area Multiband Integrated System. Rambus blends the 800 megahertz, UHF, and VHF bandwidths into common channels. Police departments, fire departments, and paramedics in nine counties then access the Rambus network to communicate seamlessly in real time during an emergency, even across the Kansas-Missouri state line. This new system will help coordinate communications during events that require cooperation between different jurisdictions and disciplines. When looking for a missing child, pursuing a vehicle from one city to another, or responding to any widespread public safety emergency, Rambus is essential. In this video, you'll learn how Rambus works, when and how to use it, and the procedure to successfully test the system. After mastering these procedures, you'll find that three streams of rescue communication will now become a single river of response. The Rambus network operates through 10 radio towers located throughout the Mark region. These radio towers range between 150 and 450 feet in height. Each tower is outfitted with three essential components. A radio repeater with interconnect equipment, three sets of antennas for the UHF, VHF and 800 MHz bands, and finally, a microwave dish. Each radio tower is also outfitted with a backup generator. When the Rambus network is used, the tower receives signals through the three standard antennas and filters them through the repeating equipment. Messages are broadcast simultaneously to all emergency personnel using Rambus. Several channels are available on the Rambus network. One calling channel, RamCall, and four tactical channels, RamTac1, RamTac2, RAMTAC 3 and RAMTAC 4. RAM call is used as a coordinating channel. RAMTAC 2 is the system's IOC, which is the initial operating channel. RAMTAC 1 serves as a backup. RAMTAC 3 and TAC 4 are only available for those agencies using an 800 MHz system. To use Rambus for a non-emergency function, an agency must coordinate with the communications coordinator or COM-C to determine which channel to use and whether it is available. During emergencies, agency personnel should first check RAMTAC-2. If RAMTAC-2 isn't in use, the agency can begin using it as the IOC. If RAMTAC-2 isn't available, the agency can begin operations on RAMTAC-1. The dispatch center will then make a system-wide announcement to let everyone know which agency initiated the call and what channel is in use. In the event of an unfolding emergency, all non-critical Rambus uses are terminated until the situation is under control. To avoid a system overload, it's vital that all agencies work with the COM-C to distribute bandwidth. The Regional Communications Coordinator is responsible for managing available regional resources as outlined in the Tactical Interoperable Communications Plan, or TICP. The COM-C is the single point of contact for allocating available regional communications resources, and he or she makes the final determination of how those resources will be assigned. The COM-C also serves as the coordinator for daily use of Rambus. Rambus can help with interoperability in a variety of situations, a car chase, a mass casualty event, an amber alert, for community-wide activities, 
or when there is a total radio system failure. There is not a standard list of situations when the Rambus network should be used. The system's flexibility is an important part of its value. Let's look at how Rambus would be used in the event of a building collapse. Once first responders recognize that the emergency situation is large enough to require a coordinated response effort between agencies and jurisdictions, the initial responder will open communication through RAMTAC2 after listening to make sure the channel is free. At the earliest possible opportunity, the dispatch center for the agency using the channel will contact the COMC and report that the Rambus network is in use. The dispatch center will also make a system-wide announcement on the RAM call channel, announcing who is using the channel, the type of emergency underway, and how long the channel will be used, if known. If RAMTAC2 is not available, the dispatch center will announce on RAM call that RAMTAC1 is being used, announcing what type of event it's being used for and by which agency. As soon as feasibly possible, the dispatch center will notify the COMC that the Rambus network is in use. All of the agencies responding to the event will continue to use their own radios as usual. The Rambus network will receive your signals, whether you are using UHF, VHF, or 800 MHz, and filter them through repeaters that allow other agencies to hear you, even if they operate on a different band. After the event is completed, the dispatch center will contact the COMC and make another system-wide announcement to let all agencies know that the use of Rambus for that event has ended. There are some rules to keep in mind while using the Rambus network. Plain language should be used over Rambus, along with the phonetic alphabet when necessary. Agencies using the Rambus network should conduct themselves using the guidelines of the Incident Command System, referred to as ICS, and the National Incident Management System, NIMS. All communications over the Rambus network should be NIMS compliant. All participating agencies must ensure their personnel are trained and familiar with the Rambus standard operating procedures. The Rambus system will be tested by participating agencies three times a month, with individual field units responding at the agency's discretion to ensure full operational status. The test will be initiated by the Johnson County Emergency Communications Center and will be conducted in a roll call format over the RAM call channel only. Any agency that does not respond to the test can be spot checked after the test is completed. For more details about testing procedures, please refer to your Rambus training manual. The Rambus network will be tested on the 10th at 0630 hours, 20th at 1430 hours, and 30th at 2230 hours of each month. By following these simple rules and training procedures, agencies across a patchwork of different radio systems and jurisdictions will be brought together in a seamless network of communication. The Regional Area Multiband Integrated System means real-time, concerted response and greater interoperability. Greater interoperability means greater effectiveness when it matters most. The Rambus system is just the beginning. Over the next few years, regional public safety professionals in the Mark region will implement a plan for a region-wide mobile data stream and ultimately a region-wide multi-agency radio system. The Kansas City region is known for its cooperation and collaboration. The Rambus Network is just one initiative where that cooperation and collaboration has paid off. For more complete information and operation of the Rambus Network, please refer to the accompanying lesson plan, PowerPoint, and standard operating procedure. You may also contact the Mid-America Regional Council at 816-474-4240.